Do you like kills? Do you like long range? Do you like social distancing? If your answers are yes to all these questions, this video is for you. Weapon stats. At the time of this recording, the Rapid Blaster Pro is the longest range blaster in the game. It comes with the kits Toxic Mist and Ink Fag. It deals 85 damage on a direct hit, 35 damage on an indirect hit and 17.5 on a very poorly hit or splash. So this means you can't one shot with this weapon unlike the blaster. It also has a smaller blast radius than his brother, but to make up for it you can shoot faster. That's why there is rapid in the name. And at longer distances. Just like any weapon in this game, if you jump while shooting the accuracy drastically decreases but you can avoid this if you use the secret sauce more on that in a minute and lastly the weapon has a normal swim speed preparation before we jump into rapid pro gameplay I will show you the gear abilities that I recommend for my playstyle the three abilities that I recommend are intensify action swim speed and some kind of ink efficiency ability intensify action Intensify action is my personal favorite for this weapon because it not only makes you faster when you dodge roll and squid surge, but it increases weapon accuracy while jumping. Normally you want to avoid jumping with the Rapid Blaster Pro, but if you're used to playing shooters or even the blaster class, you know jumping can be really good. So when do you jump? There are two situations when you want to jump with this weapon. The first situation is when you are in a close range fight and you need to dodge enemy fire. While you are jumping, you can make sure to aim at your opponent and when the crosshair is on your target, you fire. Because of the ability Intensify Action, the chance that you get a direct hit increases drastically, which determines whether you come out on top or not. The second scenario is when people are attacking you from above, most likely chargers or splatlings. In this scenario you want to jump because most of the time your enemy is positioned in a way where they aren't easily splatted from the ground. The first shot is most likely gonna be an indirect hit and the second shot should be a direct hit. Notice that your accuracy increases the moment before you land the second shot. If you can't direct the second shot, you can still eliminate them with a third shot. But at the time you fire the third shot, they will most likely have fled to a safer location. So keep that in mind. Swim speed. Maybe one of the more obvious abilities, but with this weapon it is recommended to use swim speed. There are two reasons. The first one is because if an opponent is weak and they retreat, you want to make sure you get them before they are ready to fight you again. The other reason is to escape approaching threats, just like short range weapons you fail to notice, or specials that can kill you in a second, just like the Ink Suka. Last stitch effort, or Ink Recovery, or Ink Saber Main. In practice, the gear set should look like this. The first set is for people who don't like to run last stitch effort, and the second set is for people who want to use last stitch effort. Personally, I don't see why you wouldn't run it, because at the time of this recording, it gives you so much value. In case you don't know how it works, it goes as follows. In Tervar, the last 30 seconds, last ditch effort gives you 24 ability points for the following abilities. Ink Recovery Up, Sub Saver and Main Saver. In Ranked, it works a little bit different. If the opponents are getting a score of 50 points or higher, last ditch effort will gradually become more present until the enemy team reaches 70 points. At 17 points, you get the full 72 ability points. And by the way, if you're not certain you want to use my gear layouts, check out the pros to see what gear they are using. Links are in the description. Respawn Punisher. If you do extremely well and splat a lot more opponents than you are dying, you might consider Respawn Punisher. In case you don't know what it does, let me explain. If you run this ability, you and your opponent suffer longer respawn times if you get splatted. On top of that, when you and the enemy die, the special gauge depletes more. Note that respawn reduction time of the tactic cooler gets negated as well. So keep that in mind if you're playing with a teammate that runs the tactic cooler. Bramski from the future here. At the time of this recording, re 
respawn punisher and hound don't negate the tacticaler's quick respawn and special saver anymore. The devs changed this in a recent patch. If there are any more changes in the future, I'll leave them in the description. Let's get back to the video. The remaining abilities. For the remaining abilities you can choose what you like. For me I personally prefer to maximize my build with abilities that you don't need to run a lot of. Just like super jump, special saver, bomb defense and ink resistance. How to play and strategy. The first step is the most important and that's to utilize its range. Sounds obvious but before I watched that SRB2 dudes video on the Rapid Pro I would have said that the weapon was weak in comparison to Splatoon 2 but Boy, I was wrong. He gave the feedback to use your maximum range as much as possible and so I did. It increased my splats significantly. So why does this trick help so much? Well, if an opponent is outside your maximum range and he is coming closer to you, practically the only way to hit him is with a direct hit. Indirect hits go past your opponent most of the time. This either means they escape or they kill you before you can even get a fatal shot on them. The second tip is to move backwards. This tip does not only count for the rapid Blaster Pro, but it's actually useful for every single long range weapon. The reason why you need to do this is because if a close range weapon is moving towards you, you want to avoid getting in its range. Also, when they're closer to you, you will struggle landing hits on them, and they will most likely take you out faster because of their faster firing speed. At first, this trick doesn't seem that special, but I've watched some of my replays, and even as an experienced Rapid Pro user, I have the tendency to go closer, even when a short range weapon is approaching and most of the times the end result isn't that favorable. Number 3. Use your sub weapon aka toxic mist to your advantage. At first you would think the sub weapon is kinda useless because it doesn't eliminate opponents straight away. But Bramski, it doesn't kill like a splat bomb. Easy jump. Let me clarify how it helps. There are three situations where it is incredibly useful. Firstly when people are walking on glass. You throw your sub, the enemy gets stuck in the mist, they either have to fight you or flee. They are a sitting duck so you can easily take them out with your main weapon. Secondly, people are swimming in tight corridors. You can easily block it off and when they are stuck in it, it's practically free splats. Lastly, when a lot of people are swarming around the objective, like the tower on tower control or rainmaker. It makes it harder for the opponents to push further. The fourth tip is to prioritize staying alive. When you are the last on your team, it is better to get into safety than to push the objective further. Of course, when you are one point behind, you can push, of course. But why retreat? Well, first of all, the enemy will be with more people, so the chance you win a 3v1, for example, is small. On top of that, your weapon hasn't the greatest painting power, so you most likely will get out painted. Number 5. Use your explosion radius to peek behind walls. Often the reason why I die is because I didn't see somebody sharking or hiding behind an obstacle. To avoid this, make sure to regularly check around obstacles to see if somebody is hiding in the air. It is a control weapon for a reason, so why not use it to your advantage? And it will also reduce unnecessary deaths for you and your team. And the final trick I want to share with you is simply practicing your direct shots and jump shots in the lobby in between games. It will learn you how much space you need between you and your opponent to land consistent shots on them. And it will give you an idea how much intensify action you need as well. Game modes. Let's rank the game modes from worst to best according to how well I've played them. The worst game modes play on is Turf War, which is sad because I love to play with this weapon in Splatfest back in the day. Sadly, the lack of painting power doesn't make this a viable option for this mode, which overshadows its qualities like great control power, survivability and splatting potential. In the end, it doesn't really matter because you rely too much on your teammates to make sure you actually win the game. And we all know how reliable randoms are, not. Maybe with a more turf focused kit in the future, it will be more viable in turf war again. Next up is clam blitz. This probably doesn't surprise you but this weapon isn't great at rushing the opponent's basket. You either have to rely on your teammates and support them from the back or try to be fast otherwise you find yourself in a close combat situation which isn't recommended. Also clam blitz is in my opinion the most chaotic mode where the map isn't always well painted which makes enemy sharking more prevalent. Next up is rainmaker and splat zones. In both game modes you are 
more likely to be in a defensive position. You are supporting your team from the back line. Your primary job is to stay alive and protect your teammates that are doing the objective by killing opponents. And finally, tower control. This mode was made for this weapon. When the enemy is pushing you, you can easily shoot them off the tower. When somebody is getting on the tower, no problem, you can take them out by shooting next to the tower. But that's not all when you are on the tower and people are pressuring you too much, you can use the power of suck to alleviate stress and then you win. Winning is not guaranteed. Please contact your local skill for more information. Weaknesses and solutions. There are four main weaknesses the Rapid Blaster Pro has. The first one is close range combat. The reason why it's weak at close range is because the other weapons have a higher damage output. Which means you can land one direct shot on them, but most of the times you can't land the second one. Because you are already dead. Also at close range it's easier to miss. Every shot that doesn't directly hit most likely misses completely. How to solve this? Use toxic mist to trap your enemy and move back to make sure they can't hit you as easily. They are now stuck, so it's easier to land direct hits on them. The second weakness is when your team doesn't have map control. You will struggle a lot. Enemy short range weapons can easily sneak up on you and splat you in a second. You can't really counter this because your weapon can't one shot. How to solve this? Sadly, you have to rely on your teammates to make sure the map is well painted. The third weakness goes hand in hand with the previous one, which is the lack of painting power. This makes it harder to quickly take over an area in a short amount of time. In this case, you also have to rely on your teammates to take over an area. But while your team is painting the map, you should focus on eliminating your opponents. Lastly, longer range weapons like chargers and splatlings cause you trouble. Because they have more range and damage output, you can't just easily run up to them and splat them. You have to use your nuggets. You can shark and try to get closer to them. And when you are close enough, use the surprise factor to your advantage. Another option is to support aggressive teammates who are targeting the long range weapon. Conclusion. First of all, I want to thank that SRB2 dude for inspiring me to make this video. It would be unfair not to mention him because I learned to perfect my strategy thanks to his videos. Even though this isn't an easy weapon to use, with enough practice and patience, everybody can make this work. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this type of content, please check out this video right here. And please let me know whether you like this in-depth tutorial or you would like a more simplistic one. Thanks again for watching, see you later. Bye bye!